a director is to me a creator who should create with his camera. Now they say, of course, you can't photograph a novel. You can't photograph thoughts. You can. You can. A camera can do anything, anything you want. I can glance over my, my shoulder just like that. For instance, you are, I'm a kid. There's a scene, I'm in school, and you're the teacher, and you say, this is the, the Crimean War. And I look off, and I see myself in the Crimean War. I see it. I'm running. I'm running with the soldiers. It's, are you listening to me? And I come back to you again. Yes, you can do anything you want. There's, there's no barriers. There should be no barriers. The director's job is to see that the finished story, the finished film and the finished story, is what excited him in the first place. That's number one. He has to have a feeling of visual emotion. Visual emotion. He should pinpoint an emotion and milk it and not bore anyone with it. That's the important thing. The director has a very good opportunity to, to not change anything, to go beyond it. And beyond that, he enhances a change that makes the original story, the original expression, one sentence even, come to life. I'm lightning, Louis. Then why'd you tell me your name was Godkin? Look, blubber moths, you give me back my dough or there's going to be trouble. Adam? What's my name? Uptown or downtown? My downtown name. Lightning Louis. The power of the camera, this is important, is exactly like bold face type. You cannot compete with it. So I learned something I'm trying to pass on, that don't talk about it, and this is what I don't like about a lot of people that make pictures. Show it. Do what you can't do on the stage or on radio or with a written word. Show it. Two words. I rehearse, rehearse, and I shoot once. I like it. I like it. It's like writing a story. You don't play around with too much on a newspaper. My God. <laughs> you just don't. If hunch is wrong, your hunch was wrong. That's all. And you fall on your face. I go by hunch. If, if the thing smells right, I got along great with him. Zanuck, happiest of my life. The happiest. I don't care what anybody says or what they did with him or didn't do with him. I don't, I'm, I'm only speaking my personal feeling. That one was okayed by Zanuck. I said, I'd like to get these two or three anti-social characters on a precipice of crime. Now, to me, a pickpocket is no real criminal. He's an artist. An informer, yes, she could be a criminal, but that's her job. And uh, the girl, too dumb to be a, a hooker, too dumb to be a mistress, could never become a madam, do something for a dress. I know girls like that. So if you want to use her as a curry, you give her a few dollars, buy some dresses. He said, that's great. I love those characters. Now, who do we root for? And that's why I gave him the credit. I said, what do you mean root for? I said, well, he says, these are three horrible characters, but they're so fascinating. It'll be good on the screen. Who now is your leader? I said, they are. And that's the first time he okayed anything like that. He okayed a movie where the people had no taste. The mental and artistic capacity of a petty criminal I got to know quite a few of them and trust them very much, very much, mother, more than anyone in the world. My mother would say, I'll meet you at 2 o'clock, she'll be there 2.30, traffic and all that. They are never late, never. When you want information from them, they're there. They're there ahead of me. They're waiting. Great, great. You've been whip of this squad long enough to know that a guy with my rating wouldn't grip the dame on the train. Not with three strikes on me. They don't care what you do. It's very important. You and I are in a bar, that's Charlie. What does he do, you'll say, or what do I? Right away. 
Who is he? What does he do? They don't care. That's, that's their mind. I love them. They just don't care. So here is Thelma Ritter being a, 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 a stool pigeon, always arguing with the cops for the more money. Look, let's not go into that again. Look, what do you want from me, Tiger? Do I personally raise the price on hamburgers and pork and beans in Frankfurters? Is it my fault that the cost of living is going up? These are the prices as of this morning. And she sells a fellow that's like her son. She saw him grow up. But her job, her profession is stool pigeon. She gets money from the police department. It's got nothing to do with him. I figure you shelled out about 50 bucks to find me, if I know more. Huh? <laughs> and Mo's all right, she's got to eat. He never gets mad at her. That's her job. We can't find that anywhere else in the world. They respect what you do, and they never question it. And don't you question them. That's it. This, to me, is most important because it's a characterization people lack. When he pulls up his beer, that's a safe. I knew a fellow who lived like that on the Hudson. And no rent. I used to sell baits. They used to have little shacks like that along the river. I don't know who owned it. I, maybe the city, but they never tore it down. I slept there a lot of times. Keeping beer like that, he had the cheapest fridge there in the world, but it was a great place to hide the stuff. And he sees the film, he looks at it, he puts it away. Now he's really interested. It's hard to get information. A homicide detective, 80, 90% of his, anything he cracks is very, there's no Sherlock Holmes, there's no Sam Spade, there's none of that. There's none of that. It never happened. Is he sat for? No, he used his right hand. He held the paper in his left. Did he? Hold it at an angle, like this? Yes. Did you see him close the purse? Yes. Did he put the paper over it like this when he closed it? Yes. He has to have an informer. And I'll, I'll say one sentence on this. You are a detective. And your phone rings. Your phone. Not a phone in the, uh, in the homicide squad room, but your phone. And she'll say, Gerald Smith, Pocahontas Hotel, room three, Chatham Phoenix National Bank, two years ago, 28,000, room three and hung up. You just got it. You always had a knack for living in out-of-way places, places hard to find. It's gonna be pretty hard to run him down, places he picks. Might take you almost a week to run him down. What are you angling for, a side bet? Well, every extra buck has a meaning all its own. It just so happens I haven't got a red cent left. Just so happens I know where he's shacked up. 